Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. So, we're going to be taking a look at the first round of the 2020 NHL Draft. We'll be taking a look at a recap of the first round in this video. If you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, and want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. And let's take a recap back to last night's first round of the NHL Draft. What's going on? All right, so let's get right into things. So to start things off, we're going to take a look at the first couple of picks. I'm going to speed through as I just did a 45-minute review of the entire first round, and the audio was awful because my AirPods were connected. So good job by me, and thank you, AirPods. So we're just going to go through it a little bit quicker this time. We're going to start things off. We're going to be going ahead a little bit. We're going to be looking at the Dallas Stars selecting the 30th overall pick, Maverick Bork. This was a good pick by the Dallas Stars. This is a guy that may turn out to be an interesting pick. He's a middle six forward projected player. He's a playmaker. The Dallas Stars are going to continue to have some changes on the forward core over the next couple of seasons. So they've got some older guys that as they continue to retire or move on, that they're going to need the young guys to step in. This is a great pickup by the Dallas Stars. So again, we're going to move up a couple of spots to number 28, the New York Islanders draft pick that was sent to the Ottawa Senators in the Jane Gambit Alpagiola trade as the Ottawa Senators picked up an interesting player, one of the more gritty players in this year's draft class. So they pick up from the Brandon Wheat Kings of the WHL centerman Ridley, uh, Ridley Gregg. This is a great pickup. He's third line center potential. He's a playmaker. He's a little bit of an agitator, good penalty killer. This is a great pickup for the Ottawa Senators. One of their three draft picks in this first round. It was a great pickup uh, there for the Ottawa Senators. And looking at number 27 right down the road, we have the Anaheim Ducks selecting from the uh, Sarnia Sting of the OHL forward Jacob Perot. Perot has a lot of potential. He's potential to be a top six winger. One of the better uh, pickups in the later part of the first round, in my opinion. This is a steal for the Anaheim Ducks. Bob Murray once again taking the best player available. He picks up another forward to add to that already lethal young core that he's building there with the Anaheim Ducks. Great pickup by the Anaheim Ducks. We move up to number 26. We got Jake Neighbors, a big defenseman going to the St. Louis Blues, played with the Edmonton uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings last season of the WHL. So big Edmonton Western Canadian boy. You know Don Cherry would love that. Great pickup by the St. Louis Blues. Fits perfectly into the system that they are building there and a great pickup overall. Now I had to include this, uh, the number 25 pick. We have the Colorado Avalanche's Justin Baran. Justin Baran looks like a pretty solid player. Potential to be a top four defenseman at the NHL level. A good two-way defenseman as well. Justin Baran played last season with the QMJHL's Halifax Mooseheads. This is a good pickup for the Colorado Avalanche. They continue to develop that blue line. Uh, they've already got some really talented defenseman guys like Kale McCarr, Samuel Girard, and you throw in Justin Baran down the down on there as well. Great pickup for the Colorado Avalanche. Reminds me a lot of a guy that used to be there in the Colorado Avalanche and Tyson Barry. A lot of similarities in their games. Now we're going to move up a couple of spots as we see the Washington Capitals select at number 22, Tyson Force, uh, Hendricks Lapierre, centerman from the Chicoutimi of the QMJHL. A great pickup by the Washington Capitals. They actually moved up with their draft pick, which they traded from with the Calgary Flames. A great pickup for the Washington Capitals. A really talented center. A lot of potential from this guy. Uh, he has had injury issues, which is why he fell in this year's draft. The Washington Capitals see enough value in this guy. This could be another Connor McMichael we see uh, because we've seen how good Connor McMichael was this past season uh, in the OHL. So this could be another guy next season we talk about with his injuries and stuff possibly getting fixed. He could be a real draft steal for the Washington Capitals once again. So now we're going to move up a little bit here. And uh, there were a couple interesting picks, pair of picks at 21 and 20. The Washington Cat, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets at number 21 select Yegor Chinnikov, right winger who played in Omsk of the KHL last season. He was not projected to be a first round pick. Uh, and so this is an interesting pick by the Columbus Blue Jackets. He wasn't very highly regarded, ranked 30th overall in European skaters. So he was not projected to be a first round pick. Interesting choice here by Yarmo Kekalainen and the Columbus Blue Jackets. 
And the even more shocking one at number 20 is the New Jersey Devils. They had three first round picks and they were not afraid to go off the board with this one at number 20. They pick Jakir Mukamadullen. <laughs> I think that's his name. Defenseman playing. Uh, he is currently an unrestricted free agent of the KHL. He doesn't bring a lot of skill. He doesn't bring a fast game either. He's not the best skater. And he's just a big guy. That's the that's the big thing about uh, Muka Madullen. I'm, I'm not even going to try and say that name again. But it is an interesting pickup by the Devils. I guess they felt comfortable knowing that they had their two guys that they got already with the first two picks. And they were willing to take a chance on the other one. Uh, so interesting, to say the least, there for... Um, for the New Jersey Devils. But at number 19, we see Braden Schneider go to the New York Rangers. The Rangers traded for that draft pick. The Calgary Flames were moving picks and flipping them for more picks. We saw that twice in this first round with the New York Rangers and the Washington Capitals. A couple good moves by the Calgary Flames trying to uh, continue to add some prospects into their pool. Uh, Braden Schneider is a great defenseman, though. Came out of the Brandon Wheat Kings of the WHL. You know how I feel about those Western Canadian defensemen. Uh, another great pickup here by the New York Rangers. They already are starting to build a great defense there. You've got guys like Nils Lindquist, Robertson. You already have guys like Tony D'Angelo, Jacob Truba. This is a great defense that the Rangers are building, and they continue to add to that with Braden Schneider. So now we move up to number uh, 15. As we look at Rodion Amirov going to the new to the Toronto Maple Leafs with that 15th pick he played. Uh, he's a, currently an unrestricted free agent of the KHL. He's a forward. He brings a lot of talent. There's a lot of potential out of Amirov. Potential to become a top six winger at the NHL level, a playmaker. He can put up points. This is a great pickup for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it may look like they don't need more forwards at this point, but Who's to say down the next couple of years, they lose some of that depth uh, due to the salary cap. Guys like possibly Nylander, Marner, whoever knows, right? So Rodion Amirov adds a little stability in their depth. Great pickup by Kyle Dubas and the Maple Leafs. So now we move up to number 12 as we are starting to get into the top group here. At number 12, we have Anton Lundell going to the Florida Panthers played in the HIFK with legal last season. He is a very talented center. Some people had him going as early as seven in this year's draft class. So he fell down to 12 and I don't think the Florida Panthers are complaining too much. A great two-way center, brings a lot of value, a great penalty killer. He is able to put up points as well. He's already been playing with with men in Liga over in Europe. So this is a great pickup for the Florida Panthers. At number 11 is the goaltender as David Poyle and the Nashville Predators had the guts to go out there and pick up the first goaltender in the draft class this year in the first round. The only goaltender taken in the first round, Yaroslav Askarov. The Russian goaltender looks very solid, has potential to become an elite goaltender at the NHL level. They already have UC Soros. He will probably be the bridge between uh, Pekka Rene and hopefully Yaroslav Askarov over the next couple of seasons. Great pickup by the National Predators. David Poyle. Putting his arm on the line here. This is an interesting move. I like it, though. It's gutsy, and I think the Nashville Predators will be rewarded over the next couple of seasons. We've seen goaltenders in the past that haven't worked out that way. Rick DiPietro. But we've also seen it work plenty of times as well. Spencer Knight looks like a pretty solid goaltender for the Panthers. We haven't seen him play quite yet, but better examples are guys like Mark andre Fleury, who was a former first overall pick. Carey Price, top 15 pick. And Andre Vasilevsky, who just lifted the Stanley Cup a couple of weeks ago. So I would say that's a success. So an interesting move by the National Predators, uh, but a great pickup indeed. Now at number 10, we've got Cole Perfetti going at number 10 to the Winnipeg Jets. This is a great pickup for the Jets. They may have to move some guys around in their lineup, possibly a guy like Kyle Connor, Nikolai Ehlers, Patrick Laine. They may have to move some of those guys out to create cap space. Uh, and they could bring in Cole Perfetti who could be a very cheap option on an ELC, possibly as soon as next season. This is a great move by Kevin Dayoff. He can play center. He can play left wing. He can play right wing. He's a great Swiss Army knife to have in your lineup. This is a great pickup for the Winnipeg Jets. I think they will like him at number 10. So at number 9, we head now. I'm just going to say, a lot of you out there gave me a lot of heat for putting him at number 10 because I thought he would go to the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, but he ended up going at 9, which... Isn't too far off from 10, I'm pretty sure. But some of you had him going absolutely fourth or fifth in this year's draft. I was crazy. No way he falls past eight or nine. 
Well, he ended up being at nine, so I'm just going to sit here and tell you, and just say it. I told you so. I'm not calling myself an expert by any means, but I had a feeling based off of the circumstance that at number nine, the Minnesota Wild selects centerman who played with the Ottawa 67s last season in the OHL, top goal scorer in the OHL last season, Marco Rossi. Marco Rossi has the potential to be a top six center, a top line, top line center at the NHL level. But his size is a problem. He's under six feet. He's a little bit older than some of these other guys in the draft. He could have been taken last year. So an interesting year for Marco Rossi. He deserves to be in the top ten. Uh, but he did slide off a little bit because of those things. You look at the the margin of gap between you know the skill level between him and some of these other guys. And unfortunately, teams look at size and they look at age as factors as well. And unfortunately for Marco Rossi, neither of those two things were going for him. Kind of reminds me of Cole Caulfield last season. We saw him drop so far in the draft. Sedina a couple of years back because of the size issue. They've turned out to be pretty solid players. Caulfield we're still on the fence about. Uh, but Marco Rossi kind of in that same situation. So I, I'm very excited for Marco Rossi. I hope he proves people wrong. He should have been a top four or five draft pick. But you know what? He should. He had to work his way through. He had a great season this year, uh, but I'm just going to sit here and say, I told you so. He was going to go later in that top 10. So now we move on up to number seven, and this is probably the top goal scorer in this year's draft, in my opinion. You could argue at number four, uh, that may be the top goal scorer down the line, but I really like the New Jersey Devils selecting at number seven, Alexander Holt, who played with Jer Garden of the SHL last season. He has a lot of potential. He's a very talented player, top line winger. He's a sniper. He's got great. He's got great hands, great skill up front. He's got good skating ability as well as a lethal shot, one timer, wrist shot. He's got it all, and that's why I think he's the top goal scorer in this draft class. He could probably go into the the Devils lineup next season as they're having a lot of turnover. Under new general manager Tom Fitzgerald, I like this move for the Devils. I think he could have gone even earlier in this year's draft, uh, but this is a great pickup for the New Jersey Devils. So now we move up to number six as the Anaheim Ducks select Erie Otter defenseman of the OHL. Right shot defenseman Jamie Drysdale. This is a great pickup for the Anaheim Ducks. I thought they would maybe go for another forward, but we saw them with that pick of Jacob Perot later in the draft. Uh, this is a great pickup for the Anaheim Ducks. They take the best player available. That's Bob Murray. Uh, probably looking at the board, seeing that, that Drysdale would probably be picked by four or five. It didn't end up happening. He was still on the board. So the Anaheim Ducks pick up Jamie Drysdale. Now, people, I was saying, in, you know, in my, a couple of videos that he reminds me a lot of Jake Gardner. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, people are saying like, oh, Jake Gardner's bad, this and that. I, I don't agree with that. But there is an issue that he does put up points. He's a good, you know, he, he pressures the defensive players of the wingers on the other team. He goes below the dots sometimes. But when you go below the dots, that means a forward has to go back for you or there's nobody there. So he becomes a defensive liability, and that's kind of where Jake Gardner is. He has a lot more skill than Jake Gardner. Realize that. that there's a reason he is in the top 10 in this year's draft class, but there's a reason that he, I think, fell. Uh, to number six and not pick between four and five. Uh, he's a very talented player. I hope he works out with the Ducks. I like the Anaheim Ducks. Great pick by Bob Murray at the position, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how he transitions to the NHL. I think it's going to take him at least two or three years, but Bob Murray in the midst of a little bit of a rebuild there in Anaheim, this is a good uh, stepping stone for the Anaheim Ducks. At number five, we move into the top five as the Ottawa Senators, with their one of their top picks in this year's draft class, selecting the first defenseman off the board. In their opinion, the best defenseman in this year's draft class, USHL or USA Under 18 National Team Development Program defenseman Jake Sanderson. Jake Sanderson has the potential to be a top pairing defenseman at the NHL level. A lot of hype around Jake Sanderson and what he can accomplish in the NHL. He's going to be playing alongside guys like Eric Branstrom, Thomas Shabbat, Max Lahoy on that blue line. I got his name right this time. Uh, but this is a really exciting defense that the Sens are building. And I really like Jake Sanderson jumping in there on the left side. A great addition for the Ottawa Senators. And, and the top off with who they got in number three as well. So now we move up to number four. As the, the Detroit Red Wings were in an interesting spot. We were hearing that Cole Perfetti, Marco Rossi, uh, as well as Jamie Drysdale were the top names that were being talked about for the Detroit Red Wings. And I had a feeling they were going to go with the top winger in their opinion, the top 
you know, either it was going to be Alexander Holtz, who I thought was going to go at number four. But I'm not too surprised with the guy that they pick here as they go with Swedish forward who played with the Frölunda Frontenacs in the SHL last season, left winger Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond brings a lot of potential. He's an elite winger. He's a playmaker, but he can shoot the puck and he can put up points. This is a great pick by the Detroit Red Wings. The Red Wings are known for their, you know, their Swedish players, Johan Franzen. Henrik Zetterberg, uh, they are known for bringing in Swedish players, Nicholas Lindstrom. So this is no real surprise here as they go with Lucas Raymond. They continue that culture up there in Hockey Town. I like the pick for Steve Eisenman and the Wings. We'll see how he transfers over to the NHL level, but I think he could be in the lineup next year for the Detroit Red Wings. They're really lacking that forward depth. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out there next season. Great pick by Eisenman. Now at number three is... We saw Alex Trebek announce the number three pick for the Ottawa Senators with a Jeopardy question. And the answer to that was Tim Stutzla. Tim Stutzla, whatever you want to call him. He played in the Mannheim of the DEL last season. He is considered a left winger, but he is also listed as a center on some scouting reports. So this is a, a pretty uh, dynamic player. He can play the wing. He can play center. So he's, he's flexible throughout the lineup. Another Swiss Army knife, kind of like Cole Perfetti, who we talked about earlier. This is a great pickup for the Ottawa Senators. They feel like this is a franchise-building player. As long as a franchise-building player on the blue line and Jake Sanderson, who they picked up at five. So they were really the winners of the draft day, picking up number three, the number three player, and the number five player in the draft class. Great job by the Ottawa Senators. They have those unbelievably beautiful threads as well to top it off. So good job by the Ottawa Senators, and hopefully this works out for them uh, in the future. But great pick by the Ottawa Senators. So now we move on to number two, is the Los Angeles Kings select Mini Hulk. I, I mean, uh, Quentin Byfield, the center from the Sudbury Wolves of the OHL. Six foot four, 220 pounds, 17 years old, one of the youngest players in this year's draft class. Quentin Byfield brings an unbelievable skill set, uh, skating ability, great hands, a great shot, not to mention the big NHL ready frame. This is a guy that people have been very highly touting. Possibly the you know the closest contender to that first overall pick in Alexi Lafreniere. It's been Quentin Byfield, the real close contender to getting there. Uh, Quentin Byfield is an unbelievably talented player. Has been, been com uh, comparisons between him and Andre Kopitar, as well as Evgeny Malkin, two pretty solid NHL players, I would say. So a great pickup for the Los Angeles Kings. This is no surprise, as the Kings have been known in the past to pick up gritty, powerful players. That's what you're getting here at Quinton Byfield. Potential to be a leader down the road with either an A or a C on his jersey. So great move by the Los Angeles Kings. Not to mention he had a really nice outfit on, that white suit, white tie. Oh. Looked really fresh in that little set that he had. So now we move on up to number one as the New York Rangers. This is an easy pick for Jeff Gorton and Jordan Davidson and all that group there in Manhattan as the New York Rangers welcome to the Big Apple, the Quebec native who played in the Ramouski Oceanic of the QMJHL, top player of the CHL for the past two seasons, left winger Alexi Lafreniere. Lafreniere is one of those players that you just don't see all the time. He is a very talented player. Comes out of Ramouski, who, if you remember, uh, Sidney Crosby came out of there as well. Pretty talented player, I would say. So this is a really great player for the New York Rangers. They add to that already solid forward group they have. So on the wing, I could talk about Filipino, Kako, Kako, Artemi Panarin, and then you've got Mika Zibanejad down the middle. I mean, the Rangers are just loaded. This is a great pickup for them. Brett Howden, I mean, they've got plenty of talent up front, not to mention they're building things on the blue line. They have, they seem to have things set up in between the pipes. So Alexi Lafreniere, just another piece to add on for the New York Rangers. Great pickup for the Rangers, and uh, they're going to be a serious contender over the next couple of seasons. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of this year's draft class? There were a couple of pretty big names out there, a couple of little trades here and there. We'll be talking about the day two trades uh, later. I'll be posting those videos. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.